as you look at this product, the first thing that you might notice when you see this window here is you might look at this product and think it looks a lot like Excel. That, that is not by accident, it's by design. And the reason I say it's by design, again, it refers back to the comfort level and the, the sheer numbers of people in this market that were using Excel to perform their estimating. So we wanted to give you the ease of use, the comfort level, and the confidence that, you, that you've grown up with with your Excel spreadsheets. But what we also wanted to do was provide what you don't have with Excel, which is a powerful database of your company's estimating methods kind of working hand in hand with the spreadsheet. So unlike Excel that is minus the database, we wanted to provide a powerful database with that flexibility that comes with the spreadsheet. So that's why the system looks and kind of feels the way it does. Now, as I said, we focused a lot on ease of use. So navigating WinS is quite simple. You're either navigating the software by using the series of pull-down menus that you see across the top of the screen, or WinS is somewhat unique in that you can actually add the most frequently used options that you use in WinS, you can actually customize the toolbar. So you can also navigate the system by using the options that you see on the toolbar. And these would be those options that you most frequently use. So our, our professional services group would also help you with the implementation and setup of your, you know, your custom toolbar. And then last but not least, in addition to the toolbar buttons and the pull-down menus, you can, of course, do a right mouse click. And depending on where you are in the system when you do that right mouse click, you will see the options that are available to you at that point in time. So navigating the system is, is quite simple. Now, there's some other key concepts with WinS. As I mentioned before, we've got a very flexible, easy-to-use spreadsheet that works hand-in-hand -hand with a, a cost database or a cost library or whatever term you want to use, one thing that's important to understand is when you window into the database and you bring things in from your cost database into an estimate, everything you do to those items in an estimate do not impact the database. So you don't have to worry that price changes, labor productivity changes, um, waste percentage changes, you don't have to worry that some of those changes that you're making in an estimate will somehow impact what you've got stored in the database. Those two things are, are kept separate once you pull those items into an estimate. So another kind of core key concept with, with WinEST, and I would say one of the things that, that you know, drives people to WinEST is your ability to view the data in any way, shape, or form that makes sense to your organization. And we do that through a combination of things. One, the flexible work breakdown structure capability. So the ability to take any item in an estimate and assign it a series of work breakdown structures that allow you to not only to manipulate the data on the screen the way you want to see it, but obviously those work breakdown structures allow you to report on that estimate in any way that you want to report it. So the combination of those work breakdown structure capabilities and then what WinS refers to as filters gives you a powerful ability to review the estimate like I'm doing right now. So right now, I'm clicked on a filter, and there's my 1995 uh, master format view of the estimate. If I want to toggle just as quickly to the 2004 master format view, where I have more of the 49 division breakdown, that's just one mouse click away. If I want to see a detailed view of the items in the estimate broken down by my uh, 1995 master format coding structure. I can do that very quickly and I can roll up and expand very easily what it is that I'm looking at. Now one thing that's important to understand is the coding structure is all user defined. So while our cost libraries are kind of come out of the box um, with, with items that are cross-coded to both uh, 95 CSI format and 2004 CSI format, you can utilize whatever coding structure you choose. You're, you're not married to any specific format. So you can use the coding structure that your company is most comfortable with, which includes, by the way, the level of detail or summarization you're most comfortable with. So these filters are very, very important. We're going to spend uh, some more time with these in a minute. But uh, let's go in and talk a little bit about how to perform takeoff. 
And we've got a number of ways to do that. For example, if I say file new, I end up with my blank template or a blank spreadsheet here. So I've got a new estimate. I can come in and enter some information about this project. I could say that this is for the uh, U.S. Bank Building, uh, Kent, Washington. I could put in miscellaneous information about the project. I could say that the project is uh, 12,000 square feet. So I could put in an overall job size if I wanted to. And so on and so forth. I could pick a default labor table and a default equipment table. And we're going to talk and take a look at those in a bit too. But in WinEst, you can either do your labor and equipment broken down simply by just an hourly cost for each item, or you can get more detailed and associate a crew, a necessary crew, to implement or install that item that's in the estimate. Um, either way. And Obviously, if you use a crew, those crews would need to be associated with a rate table. So I can actually store rates for general laborers, a laborer one, a laborer two, a cement mason, a foreman, a supervisor. I can store not only their base rates, but all associated benefit rates to come up with an overall composite rate. So I can enter in information about the client. I also have user-defined labels and fields that I can store, so up to 30 fields where you can create your own additional information. But we'll accept this here, and now what I can do in this blank template is I can go in and begin to put an estimate together. And I've talked about the power of the database. I window into the database by clicking on the takeoff button. When I click on the takeoff button and then next click Add, this is what allows me to then window into the database at two levels. I'm either windowing into the database at the item level or the assembly level. An item is just that. Um, I like to give some people some context here. You might think of an item in, a, in an interior metal stud wall. One of the items could be the, the vertical studs that are in that wall. Another item might be the top plate. Another item might be the bottom plates. Another item might be the gypsum wallboard that's placed on both sides of that wall. Um, each one of those things would be considered an individual item. Now, I could build an estimate by windowing into the, into the database at the item level and finding each one of those items and quantifying them. However, the, the real power of WinEst is in what we call assembly takeoff. When I do assembly takeoff, I can get information um, kind of in predefined kits. So if I click on concrete and then I go to concrete flat work and I were to grab a uh, slab on grade, for example, I can select the slab and next I can spec out the slab. So this is an example of what I first began with in that PowerPoint presentation in terms of protecting your company's intellectual property. So. What kinds of questions does your best estimator go through in their head when they're estimating the cost of a concrete slab or interior walls or a roofing system, whatever it may be? Those are the same questions that you would want to build into these assemblies so that the entire department then, really, you're going to raise the bar in people's ability to estimate at a level of detail or just help ensure that you don't have holes in the estimate. The other thing I should point out is if you look at what I'm seeing right here and you say, well, we wouldn't estimate to that level of detail, that doesn't matter. You are in complete control of that. So if you said we just do a simple surface area calculation on the slab and we just come up with a one item and it's a cost per square foot for the slab, that's up to you. It's, it's how your database is structured. The database I'm using right now is a more detailed database. That's why it asks me these questions. Um, there are default values in here, but I can override them at any point in time. So maybe on this project, it's actually calling for 3,000 PSI concrete, not 2,000 PSI concrete. I just double click on that. It asks me how I'm going to get the concrete to that pad, and I can select any method that I choose. So when I accept this, what I can then next do is come out here, and I might want to assign um, a location. And I can see that I don't have any locations yet in this estimate. So I could say that this is for building one. 
so on and so forth. And then I can accept that. Um, while we're here, uh, we'll go in and, and let's say we do some concrete walls. So we'll come in here and we'll gather some uh, uh, just some kind of generic concrete walls here. And again, I'm presented with some specification type information. Um, and in a similar way, I'll accept that. Now, here's the key. When I go back out to my takeoff sheet, I can see that I don't have any quantities for the items in this estimate. And obviously, I want to solve that problem. But you notice the system, because of the way I spec'd it out, notice I have 3,000 PSI concrete here for this slab, not 2,000 PSI concrete, so on and so forth. So how do I get these quantities? There's a couple different ways to do it. I can place my cursor here and simply respond to these dimensional questions like the area of the slab, and I could say the area of the slab is 12,000 square feet and just type it in. Or I could, if I had WinS virtual takeoff product, as we described earlier in that PowerPoint presentation, I can do a two-dimensional takeoff assuming that I have access to some electronic plan. So I could say that this is for my U.S. bank drawing or plan. I could also, from an audit trail perspective, um, put my marked up plans. I can actually store my takeoff on layers. So I'll put my slab on my concrete flat work uh, layer. And here is where I tell the system whether I have access to electronic plans or paper plans. If electronic, I just click and then browse for those plans out on the network or on my local drive. And I come in here, I select a set of plans, I say OK, and here I am. And now here, the real power of WinS is what it is I'm trying to quantify over here from my slab on grade and the image itself are displayed side by side. I don't have to toggle back and forth between the image and what it is I'm trying to quantify. Now, since this is the first time I've associated this set of plans with the estimate, the first thing I would do is scale these plans so that I get an accurate takeoff. So I'm going to come in here and all I need to do if I want to scale from plans is know a single dimension on these plans. So if I know a dimension, let's say, on this plans is 30 feet, I type in 30, it asks me to click the first point of that 30 foot dimension. I click it, I click the second point, and now the system has scaled these plans. I click the OK button. I can determine what kind of audit trail I want to leave behind as I go in, and again, my whole point here is I want to get the area of this slab. And I can come in here and begin to touch point for my slab, and begin to do my takeoff and see the audit trail left behind here. And now I can come in, and notice it says 11,400 feet. I can say it's 8 inches deep. I can say I've got 4 inches of base underneath that slab. Here it's asking me for the perimeter for the uh, formwork. And at the same time we were getting the area, we tracked the perimeter of that slab, which was 481 feet. And I will accept that value for each of these formwork questions. And I will hit my add quantity. And just that quickly, when I go back to WinEST, where before I had no quantities, now I've completely quantified that slab. And the same would be true if I wanted to do the same thing for my exterior walls. I could come in and in here I'm just going to say I've got 481 lineal feet. It's uh, 12 feet high. The thickness is uh, 8 inches. Do I have any area of special finish? I'm just going to put in some numbers here. I've got zero openings and so on and so forth. Okay, so I can answer these questions, hit my Add Quantity button, and now I've quantified the slab and the walls that quickly. But let's go back to our estimate sheet and look at what we've got. So before, we were talking about the power of these filters. Well, here they are. And you can see in my filters here that I have the ability, again, to kind of slice and dice this data however I choose. So here's a summarized view. Now, we know that a lot of the, the estimating process, you, you want the ability 
to modify and manipulate the data coming into the estimate and save it for this estimate only. For example, if I wanted to a labor view, I can quickly see just those items in the estimate that have labor cost associated with those items. The power of that is maybe because of the location of this slab and this structure, I want to take all of these productivities, these labor productivities, and I'm going to make an adjustment. So I'm going to modify the labor productivity negative 20%. And just that quickly, I've adjusted all those productivity factors. Those adjusted productivity factors combined with the quantities gives me a number of hours for the specific crews, and I get my labor total. Now, something that is extremely unique about WinS is the audit trail. Uh, I've studied countless estimating solutions that are in the market today, and, and WinEST has the most complete audit trail bar none. So everything that you do to an item in the estimate is recorded and stays with this estimate for the life of the estimate. So you saw where I just went through an adjusted labor productivity. If I click on any one of these items, it will actually tell me, and in this particular case, it says at 9.32 a.m. on May 10th, I adjusted the labor productivity from 0 0.072, or, or uh, from 0 0.09 to 0 0.072. So you can see that we, we capture that information. But these filters are powerful. If I needed to focus on some material pricing, I could click on my material filter, and every item in this estimate that has material cost associated with it is, I can view it from this filter. So now when I come in, if I want to take this 3,000 PSI concrete item and adjust the price to $90, I can do that. And it re-extends and gives me a new dollar total. And just to highlight again, it wrote that change to the database. So it, it's keeping track of that all the time. So if this bid were due at 2 o'clock tomorrow, I can go in and review all the changes that I made. Now, I might want to document the reason for that change. And documenting things that you do in WinS is also quite simple. So if I came in here and said I wanted to document something about this uh, form work, I can just double click on the item. I get a notepad that comes up. And I can say, check on wallboard price, you know, whatever. And I can save that note. And now, visually, over here in the left-hand column, I see I have a little yellow sticky pad. That lets me know visually right away that I've got a note associated with that item. And when I click on that item, I can see the note at any point in time. Every report in WinS gives you the option to include notes when you print out your report. So you can print not only the items themselves and the data from any view, you can include the notes when you, when you print those results. 